for the whole of my life is to be under FATAC. We never, we never changed that because we worked with FATAC and we never could forget name this FATAC in my life. I have to thank you, Mr. Philip. I from Chantapli and my first start Muay Thai I with Sit Padang in South Jing Cha Kung because I follow my brother to to Bangkok to want to be fighter. And after that I mean, after I fight with maybe it, after I twenty one year old I have to be the soldier. I go back to be in my, in my army for two years. And after army, when I get up army, uh, my own manager, they so all fighter to fatter. That's why the first time I, I, he told me to come help him to work with uh, fighter at fatter gym. Well, I mean, that is long, long, long time ago. I, I really couldn't remember very detailedly, but uh, the owner of Sit Podang, you know, is always in my camp helping me this, helping me that, you know. Of course, he did something for me, okay, that's why he come and help me, blah, blah, blah. And finally, you know, you know, most of the camp owner in Thailand, most of it, you know, like their life is to be not only a, a Camp owner, they also gambler, you know. Nighttime they go to the stadium, they bet, you know, on, on the fighting. Daytime they all stay there and, 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 and you know, gambling also, you know. So finally he, he had a lot of debt, okay? And uh, he came to me and, and tried to sell his camp to me. Well, you know, Kadia was one of it, but Kadia is not uh, uh, his top fighter. But but you know, his top fighter is called Pon Pon Sit Podang, and then he was Thailand champion, you know. And then okay, finally I just bought all his camp, you know. And then uh, of course uh, Kadia is with me. Since that, that that means wow. I said wow, maybe. 40 years ago, <laughs> and then Kajal uh, is not a real good fighter, uh, but uh, uh, because not 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 it's not uh, not very good, but because of his tall, he's very tall for Thai, so no one want to fight him. So it's difficult, very difficult to find him a fight. You know, that's why you have to keep up to be a fighter. And then to become my trainer, and then be, become my uh, driver, you know. I come with uh, Kan Yao, right? In the first wicket, maybe come to uh, first thing in the Philippines, stay in uh, Bangkok, in uh, Ikamai, and he moved here to Bangpi, and then we come together with. Philip, you know, Bang P. When we I start with fit fat uh, we I try to uh, training fighter because uh, I have uh, my own gym. They have their own fighter. Every fighter to come over there, I have to hope them, hope have for him and need spar with him. When sometimes he, maybe nobody can need spar, I have to hope them to. And after that, uh, Fairtech moved to Bang P. In and with same thing, I start about hold the pad, everything, do work with the fighter, on um, until uh, until to I am a uh, 34 year old. That's uh, I moved to America because Mr. Philip, he want to open gym in Arizona. And we moved to Arizona in 1993. After work, I decided to open a camp in America. He he is the first one I'm thinking of because of his size, you know, big is good for America. And then because of his wife, his wife also is my best housemate, you know. That's why I invite him. Of course, they 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 say yes immediately. 
we we coming to America with the 1994, right? With Kwang, with my daughter and Kanya, pick me up. Did Kanya come first one year, one more year, and she go back, pick me up, and my daughter, and come to Arizona. Yeah, in a four year in Arizona and move here, San Francisco. Um, coming to America was like a whole different world. Um, again, I don't really remember much, but um, it's kind of hard, like coming to a different country with no, uh, there's a language barrier. But um, I feel like as a kid, you uh, pick up more on the language. Um, so, I mean, it was different to leave like family, you know, friends and all that, but um, you just adapt, I guess, so. We opened gym in uh, Arizona, maybe almost a couple year, and we had to move to San Francisco because in Arizona it's not too good for us because that's the weather, everything very kind of not too many people to come to, to learn Muay Thai over there because too hot, different. That's why um, we have one five student named Alec Kong. He fly to Arizona to be learn Muay Thai over there and. After that, Mr. Philip, he tried to be close uh, fair tap at Arizona. Um, uh, Ale Gong, he, he asked Mr. Philip to open him in San Francisco. And he wanted to use fair tap name, everything. But uh, Mr. Philip said, when you use you felt that you supposed to have a um, Thai trainer. Then that's uh, he asked um, Mr. Alec, uh, Alec asked me to move to uh, San Francisco in 1996. That's the first time we came to America in, at 444 Carmentina Street. That's the first gym in San Francisco. And after a couple of years, we try to bring back about all, all ten to uh, bunker. They really come to San Francisco too because after with uh, gym and you know listener crowd, all still all people they move, uh, uh, all fighter they move with di different person, and we open in San Francisco. We, I need more more ten to come home to training. That's why we. We tied bring Bunker back to San Francisco together in 1997 or 98, something like that. That's after a couple of years in 2000, I know 2001, and Alec Kong he gets shot, and that's why it fair check is they will be chain on uh, the manager to be Mr. Mr. Lin, uh, Anthony Lin, uh, his uh, son-in-law, uh, uh, Mr. Philip, and we have. I worked with him a couple of years with uh, Fairtech. It took around two or three years. I worked with him, and after that, um, I asked Mr. Philip to. I want to. Uh, I don't want to work for for him, and I want to work with my student, my Ligana. And that's why I moved to teach Muay Thai in Oakland, in a uh, Pacific Link spot, until now. Well, of course, having, uh, you know, my good trainer, my good fighter, like uh, Jong Sanan or, or Gan Yao in America, helping fair tech name a lot, especially uh, Gan Yao, because of his size, you know, he, he, he can train, you know, Two three hundred pound uh, 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 foreigner easily because he's tall and big also, and because he's very good in, 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 in to be a trainer. Even uh, UFC, at the first state first year of UFC, 
UFC also pick him to be one of the trainer in reality show the first year. So you can see Tan Yao and a lot of fair tech stuff in, in UFC then. Of course, Tan Yao daily, especially Tan Yao uh, helping and uh, to build and to make fair tech name a lot. Uh, right now, it's almost uh, 25, 25 years already we live in America right now. We bought a house in Oakland with uh, with my friend because we share 50-50. That's what we bought a house together because sometimes I get, it's expensive. We cannot to buy right because I didn't, I don't have money too much. That's why I had to partner with my friend. We bought a house together. Right now we we live in Oakland and we and we teach I teaching in Oakland is very really good for me because when from my gym and my house I'll be maybe five minutes away to driving over there and come kind of quick go over there and come back easy for me to do. Um, well, growing up in San Francisco and growing up, you know, around Muay Thai, I was definitely at the gym every day. So. Yeah, I was around fighters every day, <laughs> um, hung out with all different kinds of people, and I, I guess I had a really fun childhood, you know, I was able to roam around and learn Muay Thai as well. Um, Muay Thai and Fair Jacks has definitely had a big impact on my life. Um, I've definitely gotten a lot of, you know, family through it, um, growing up with like Joyce Sanan and Anne and Bunkard and they're all my uncles so that's kind of definitely family um, and definitely lifelong friendships that um, have been you know gained from this as well and I'm very thankful that Fairtex is a part of our lives. So I was definitely at the gym every day um, so my life definitely revolved around that um, and I'm very thankful for it because um, Growing up, I was like, oh, I don't want to do Muay Thai, like, whatever, Muay Thai, or rather, you know, go do something else. But um, once I started working at the gym, I definitely appreciated more, um, appreciated what my dad does. And so it definitely opened my eyes a little bit. And yeah, now, now I'm training more, <laughs> trying to train more. So, yeah. So how Muay Thai and Fairtex has impacted my life personally <coughs> is um, I think I wouldn't have today if it wasn't for, you know, Muay Thai and Mr. Wong. Oh, Philip, he, he really nice, really good for, for my family, yeah. I never forget him, yeah. He take care of my daughter in the when uh, we come we don't know anything. He take care, take her, go to school. Yeah, it, uh, with her son, with him son, I him. Yeah, same school, you know. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was kind of like a guardian. Yeah, kind and of, yeah, he take care of everything. He really good. Yeah, when no help, fair tech, no help, Phil, Mr. Wong, we never get like this. Thank you, thank you very much. The last one I miss. Thank you to Mr. Mr. Wong uh, to bring me family, everybody, and give me work and give me opportunity, everything to be in America for the whole life. I think I love Muay Thai and I love Fat Thai more. And done. <laughs>